So every time I make a video about a note taking application, I get several comments asking me to take a look at Joplin. Now, I have in fact look at, looked at Joplin before. I've made videos about it. It's been included in some of my top five videos and I've talked about it on the podcast, but I've never actually used it for any extensive period of time because when I was trying it out, the only way it was really available was as a snap package. And at that time, Snap was, well, it was astonishingly slow, way slower than it is now. Sometimes it would take like 45 seconds for Joplin to actually load. Nowadays, though, Joplin is available in many different formats. And because it's available as many different formats, I've deigned to try it again. Over the course of the last couple days or so, I've been messing around with Joplin both on my machine here and on my phone. And I have some thoughts, both good and bad. So let's go ahead and talk about Joplin, but before we do, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it, it'd really help the channel. So let me show you my Joplin right now. So this right here is Joplin. Now, I haven't taken a ton of notes, I don't take a ton of actual notes, so I don't wanna just like spam it, but I've taken some test notes as you can see here, and I have some private notes in the My Notes folder, and I've used it a little bit. And I have, like I said, some thoughts. First off, the UI is what you'd expect from a note-taking application. It's not great, it's also not bad. I don't have any real qualms with how it looks, or how it feels, or how it acts. I will say that it does mark down really well. One of the first things that I always test in any note-taking application is how does it do when it comes to no, uh, markdown support, right? And this does really well. It will do code. It'll allow you to put insert a picture just by typing the path to the picture, which is nice. It'll allow you to do a link. It has different size headers, and they all show up both in the actual, you know, editor part and in the preview part, which is nice. It doesn't allow you to add tags. And when I say that is like, yes, you can add tags down here. But one of the things that I've really come to enjoy about Obsidian is the ability to do something like at and then the name of the note or whatever, right? And that's not how you spell note, Matt, really. And it would basically let you link to a note using something like that. And there are actually quite a few applications that let you do that. Joplin, unfortunately, is not one of them. But you can use tags and sort and search by tags if you want to. So that's reasonable enough even if you can't mention a tag within the note without actually linking to it. Because you can actually link to a note, which I've done in this note here. And yeah, well, you can actually link to the internal section, you know, the internal link to a note. It's not great. It just appears as a link. And while it will take you to where you need to go, it's not pretty. It's it's more of a link, not a tag. And it requires you to actually do the whole markdown of the, you know, the tag or whatever, of the note. And that's not the greatest. And you can link to an external link, but then it's, you know, it looks like this. And you, again, would have to do the markdown thing in order to actually make it look ugly. It's not great, right? So that's one kind of negative thing. And I know I'm kind of popping all over here, but I'm kind of rambling through this thing because this is not a review. I haven't used it long enough to say, ah, here's my Joplin review, but these are just some kind of early thoughts on it. And just to note that I've been using Obsidian, as you can see the lo logo right here, uh, for a couple months since I made my last video on Obsidian, I've been using it constantly for the last couple months. Now, one thing I will say is that I haven't been using Obsidian for notes. <laughs> I've been using Obsidian as a markdown editor and as a writing tool. For that, it's fantastic. I can say that Joplin is a better note-taking application than Obsidian, at least for my use case, because it's simpler. It doesn't have all of the mind mapping and all of that nonsense that Obsidian does, and that's good because I don't want that in my note-taking application. I get distracted by it. I end up actually turning it into something different. With uh, with Joplin, I am actually able to t use this to take notes. It has a fantastic mobile application. It allows you to synchronize in many different ways, including Dropbox, OneDrive. It has its own Joplin synchronization service. You can also use Nextcloud, which is what I've been doing, and it's a good. We'll talk more about synchronization here in a second, but it works really, really well. And as a note-taking application, because it supports Markdown so well, I can take really good notes. I can do checkbox, I can do uh, to-do lists, I can do uh, like regular old checkboxes and list item type things. Basically any type of note that I want, and I can be as organized as I want about it too. 
I will say that I would like to be able to create a notebook that is already nested, right? And I think that actually I might be able to do it now if I create this new one, new notebook, like so, and then, okay, where will that appear? That just appears at the bottom. What I'd really like is for, if I have this folder of notebooks selected, I'd like to be able to take that and actually have it here. And you can, but it, it's something you have to do afterwards. So that's another thing. It's kind of a weird thing that I would like to work a little bit differently, but it's not that big of a deal. I do love the fact that you can create multiple notebooks, have them organized as much as you want. And I plan on doing this and you can then have sub notebooks. So if I wanted to actually have another new notebook like so, and I, you know, I select an emoji here like this and hit okay. And I can actually take this and put it right on up under new notebook. So I can have as many nested notebooks as I want. And then each one of those notebooks can have a whole bunch of notes in them. So I can be super, super organized, which is something that I really adore when it comes to a note taking application. Because the thing that I've been using for the last 15 years, Google Keep does not allow any organization whatsoever. They're all in just one gigantic folder, all shoved together. And that has always bugged me. It's one of the reasons why I'm constantly looking for something new. And I like this fact that I can kind of do this organization here. Now, the problem comes in is when you do this whole synchronizing thing. So this will synchronize to my mobile phone and look just like this. So if we take a look at my next cloud thing here, you can actually see that they dumped all of those notes, including a whole bunch of other things, which because I don't have this many notes right in the stock personal files folder. There's no organization here whatsoever. It that bugs me. I don't want that at all because I, I use Nextcloud for other things. I want it to be in its own places. Now, I think that if I were to go into my synchronization settings, and I'm not going to show this because it's going to have some personal information there, but if I go into options and then the synchronization here, I should be able to change the WebDAB URL to a folder that I create on Nextcloud, and then it will at least shove all of those within a subfolder, which will be at least a little bit more organized. I wish that it was organized already instead of just dumping random files with random file names here. Like I can't, I, I can open this, I think, it, it, but this is just, that's unusable, <laughs> right? It's not my, one of my actual notes. It's part of a note. It's some kind of image or whatever. It's just basically metadata, right? And one of these here is probably my actual note, but how am I supposed to know which one's my actual note? So I, I wouldn't be able to use something like Nextcloud Notes in conjunction with this, which I'd really like to be able to do. Like if, if for whatever reason, I, you know, I don't have Joplin installed, but I do have Nextcloud Notes installed. These are just markdown files. I should be able to just view them in another markdown editor or markdown note taking application. And that'd be awesome. But because they're unorganized, they're not named, they're not really associated exactly with the notes that I've taken. These are basically unusable in Nextcloud form, which is not great. Okay, so another thing about synchronization that I want to talk about, and I've blurred some of the stuff out here on the synchronization page because it has some of my, you know, sign information, but there's a part here where it says Nextcloud WebDAV URL, and this is the URL that you need to put in in order to have Joplin have access to your next cloud instance, right? It has your URL for your next cloud. And then it has a slash remote dot PHP slash DAV slash files slash your username. And what here, I'm pretty sure that I could add a folder to this and then it would synchronize those my all that stuff to the folder that I specify. I think that's something that I'm going to be able to do, but I'm not sure yet. I'm not going to try it right now here on camera, but I'll try it later. But one of the things that I wanted to talk about here is that this URL is fairly long. And if you want to actually use synchronization on other devices, you have to have this URL in that other application. Now, I'm just thinking about this now. I should have thought about it earlier is that I should have just copied this, put it in a note or, or in uh, in my next cloud or whatever, somewhere where I could actually get to it and then copied and pasted it. I, like a caveman, decided that I was just going to you know, write it or type it out. And that ended up being kind of a pain in the, in, in the rear end. I don't like that. I wish there was like a QR code. Once you've edited this, they should let you create a QR code to synchronize. That'd be really cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other settings. I'll probably come back to the synchronization thing because that's the thing that bothers me the most, but we'll, we'll move on to some of the other things. So they do have a plugin mechanism, but they don't have a way to actually, as far as I can tell within the app, 
show all the plugins that are available. Because if you type like a, a Vim or whatever, like there's not a Vim plugin, but you can see it as I type things, there's actually a whole bunch of plugins that are available here, like tons and tons of them that's kind of like start with a V or the, all the... A lot of these don't actually start with a V, but you get the point, right? You can see that there are a ton of plugins, but as far as I can tell, unless you've started searching for something, there's no way to actually see the plugins that are available, which is not great. I'd like to see all of the plugins that are available, and then I can refine my search once I get there, once I know what I'm searching for, which is, you know, again, not... It's just the way that I'd prefer to work, but this is, I suppose, one way to do it. You, you can go through and ma make some edits on how Markdown works within the editor itself. Again, I'm being very critical here, but the layout of this page is very texty, if that makes any sense. It's very hard to read because there's just a ton of different text things that you have to do, and it's not well laid out. I, you know, you have a lot of room over here. Make this two rows. Make the text a little bit bigger. Make Instead of text boxes, make buttons. It would be better designed and easier to kind of suss out what all these things mean if, you know, it was a little bit better designed. There are also some settings for how the notes work. You can have auto pairs for brackets and parentheses and stuff like that. That's really cool. You can save the geolocation so you can kind of know where you've created the notes. You can also have it auto resize large images, which is really nice as well. It'll, you can also manage on how long it will keep your note history, which is nice. And there is a fantastic web clipper. I'm very happy to have this back, to be honest with you. I had this when I was way back when, when I was on Evernote, which is like decades ago. It wasn't decades ago, but like 15 years ago when I was on Evernote. And since then, I haven't really had this right now. There there are some things that allow me to, to send my notes to Google Keep, but that's such an unorganized mess. I never used it. So... The fact that I have this back and I can choose where my web clippings go right into the appropriate folder, that's really nice. There's a whole section here of keyboard shortcuts, which all of these are editable, which is something that I really like to see. So other than appearance settings, which you can change the font size, how it looks in terms of theme, it has a few pre-made themes. It doesn't look like you can add other themes, which is disappointing. I wish it just had said, hey, let me just inherit my GTK theme. That'd be nice, but it doesn't. You can have it switch between light and dark based on your system theme. I haven't tried that because I don't use light themes. And there is the ability to turn on a custom style sheet. So if you wanted to do your own custom theme, I suppose that's probably the way that you'd do it. Another thing here in the general that is really interesting is they do have a keyboard mode. So if you are used to Vim or Emacs, you can actually choose that keyboard mode and then you have access to Vim mode. So that's another thing that I always look for in a note-taking application, especially on the desktop. I mean, the, the mobile is obviously different, but on a desktop, I want to have Vim mode and this has it, which is nice. So it's not the best Vim node, but it's not the worst either. So if I go back here to a note, and I go here, you can see I'm, I'm in Vim mode. So this is me moving around in Vim mode. I can then go into insert mode, and this is a typing test thing. And then I can go back to, to visual mode. One thing I don't care for is that the block changes sizes with the letters. Like I want a consistent block. Like you can see here, it's really small. Here it's bigger. And then, you know, it's bigger there, it's taller. That inconsistency really bothers me, but it's not that big of a deal, right? So it does have Vim mode, which is, again, really nice. So there are other features that I want, that I probably could talk about. Searching, once you have a whole bunch of tags, it is possible. There's a, there, You can search by tag or by note up here, and that's good. Uh, I haven't really found a need for it yet because I only have, a, like, what? 10 tags or something like that, or 10 notes or something like that. So there's no really real reason for me to search. But once, if I were to use this long term, after I got a whole bunch of tags, I'd want to test that search to make, sh make sure it actually worked very well. I'm assuming that it probably does, given the fact that you can, again, add tags down here at the bottom. So that would make things easier to search by. It does have a built-in spell checker. So if you want to add spell checker to your markdown editor, you can do that. You can also encrypt your notes so that you have to enter a password to actually view the note. So that's possible as well. I don't know any of the lingo or jargon around what kind of encryption they're using, but you can use them. It does have this thing called statistics, so you can see how many words and lines and stuff like that. That's cool. It also, I, I believe it will actually show that somewhere while you're typing. I'm not actually sure if that's true. I might be mixing up another application with that. 
It doesn't have anything like a focus mode as far as I can tell. So if you wanted to use it like a focus mode, it's possible that I'm just missing it. But there's no like big thing here that shows you that there's a focus mode, which is a little disappointing, but not that big of a deal. There is a whole bunch of collaboration stuff that they have. So you can share notebooks, share notes and stuff like that. But I didn't get into any of that. So I don't know how well that works. So if that's something that interests you, you'll have to kind of look at that on your own. But it is something that is there if you need it. So overall, to be honest with you, I am a little down on Joplin. And I'm disappointed in the fact that I'm down on Joplin because overall it works kind of the way I want a note-taking application to work. It has a tree style notebook list so I can actually be as organized as I want. It has the, a really good markdown editor support so I can do all the markdown stuff that I want. It does synchronization. It doesn't charge you for synchronization like Obsidian does, which is great. But the big downer here for me has been the synchronization. It synchronizes fine. I'm going to put up two, video, two screenshots right now of the stuff that you saw me create in a mobile application is synchronized perfectly fine, but I don't want all that stuff shoved in my next cloud, just general files folder. Like uh, eventually that's going to get out of hand. So I'm going to need to be able to fix that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to yet. I'm assuming that I can add something to that URL that you guys weren't actually able to see uh, because I had to blur it out. But if I can add a, for, like a, a, a subfolder to that path, so that all that stuff can at least go in its own folder, that's gonna make Joplin a lot more usable and better for me. And if that's the case, then my opinion of it kind of switches around a little bit because then I can actually find myself using it a little bit more and I don't have to worry about having all the stuff shoved in my next cloud where I don't really want it to go. The other option, of course, is that I just use a different synchronization method, which I can do if I want to. I don't really want to because I've gone through the process of actually self-hosting my next cloud. I actually want to use it for things like Joplin. And if I can do that, you know, and clean things up a little bit, then I'm going to be happier than I think I am am right now i'm also a little doubtful that i'm going to be able to so we'll see how that goes i will try to do that after i'm done recording here or t before i post this video and i'll leave a note in the comment section below on whether or not i was successful uh, but overall i have mixed feelings the synchronization stuff I, as, I, as i said uh, i don't know yet we'll, we'll see if i can fix that fix that if i can't then joplin's probably not for me if i can then the rest of it's kind of okay. The The UI is good. I don't really care for the setting stuff. It's very confusing and kind of all over the place, but you know, whatever, I don't, I'm not going to spend my time in the settings anyways. In terms of actually like taking notes, it's pretty good, right? It has a good markdown stuff. It has the ability to organize stuff as much as you want. You can add tags and well, you can't mention tags and notes. I don't, you know, I, I can live without that feature. It's really pretty good if I can get that synchronized stuff to actually go where I want it to go. So overall, Joplin, good note-taking application on the syncing. So if you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash thelinuxcast. You can also head on over to the store, which is available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find hats and hoodies and t-shirts and, and all sorts of other merch. All the proceeds for from the store go directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys. So head on over to shop.thelinuxcast.org and give it a check and uh, you won't be sorry that you did. Thanks everybody for supporting me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing without you. The channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, 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 very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.